So I think what we're experiencing here at Fahrenheit is the extreme change that every business is feeling with AI. For sure. And I, I, there's a great article recently in the Harvard Business Review by uh, a guy named David Edelman and Vex Sherman called Six Ways AI Can Disrupt Your Business. And they go through from a board perspective and talk about different ways that boards should be thinking about AI and the different impacts that it could have on any given business. So they give you kind of a framework to think through potential impacts. And then they walk through the six, which are pretty cool. Really, really, really well structured. So the, the first one they talk about is, is gains through granularity. So if you were to imagine a world where you could manage every KPI exactly perfectly and you're not using averages, you're not using imperfect data, but you have a machine to manage that optimally across all the KPIs, what does that world look like? Right? What would it look like if you had a competitor who could do that, but you couldn't? So gains through that granularity of data and the ability to more precisely pull the levers of the machine, right? right? The second one they talk about is the partner ecosystem. I think this has implications for just about everybody out there. But they talk about the um, automotive industry. And if you think about how AI is coming into autonomous vehicles and all the different sensors and inputs, it's becoming more of a computer than it is a vehicle. Right. Well, their point in this article is that that's making the OEMs, the you know, Fords and, and GMs of the world, pretty heavily reliant on those tech partners. Right. In, turn, in a, more than ways than just supply chain, right? I mean, there's all sorts of liability questions. There's real complexity in that partner you can right. them, right? The, the sort of build, borrow, buy conversations get very complicated very quickly. Right. That new ecosystem. Absolutely. Yeah. Because you have, you, you have specialists in this, in AI, right? Where... I'm not a specialist. I, I don't think you're a specialist. <laughs> I'm absolutely not a specialist. <laughs> but there are people out there, and if we're going to go yeah. do something in this space, you and I, we'd probably partner with one. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So it creates a lot of complexity. The next one they talk about is just snowballing risk and the regulatory implications of this. So they point out that, you know, as we learn more about AI and, and what it's capable of, what it's good at, what it's maybe not so great at, we're likely to see this risk right. profile growth. Yeah. 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 And so how do you deal with that? How do you think about that and, and be flexible to, to adapt to it as it grows? The last three of the scary ones, and they're my favorites, honestly, because it's what I deal with in, in talking about disruption with my clients. And, and those are, you know, real fundamental changes to the business model. Yeah. So radical cost transformation, right? Certain things will not cost what they used to cost. And yeah. they, use, they use management consulting as an example of that. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> the traditional leverage yeah. model consulting firm right. where your your business is building up 24-year-old MBAs. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff now that you don't need those 24 right. old MBAs. And they have some really interesting stats about how much more productive they are, how much cheaper it is. That's that's all revenue for them, right? It's fewer yeah. hours. So how do you how do you think about that? And there's implications across a lot of businesses, I think. Yeah. From the cost transfer. The next one's value proposition re redefinition. So fundamentally shifting how you create value for your customers. Right. Or finding that somebody else has created, cre you know, shifted that paradigm for you. Yeah, yeah. Right. So thinking about how do you how do you get ahead of that? How can you see it coming? The last one is is flat out obsolescence. There right. there are going to be things that just aren't needed. Yeah. So really good framework though for boards, for business leader CEOs, leadership teams to just a framework to kind of have to wrap, wrap your head around it. It, it's sort of amazing the pace of this change yeah. is rapidly growing. Yeah. And, and they make that point in here, as a matter of fact. It's, it's not like you can sort of have a tiger team right. or a strategy team or even an outside consultant say, come study this for six months, tell us what to do. Uh, it's changing too quick. So they would encourage you, I think, just to develop a framework to think about it in real time because it's right. happening so quickly. I mean, the one thing I think businesses can't do is ignore that this is here, right? So you have to take action now or suffer the consequence of the world moving beyond you, right? It's going to be a real step change in a lot of industries. A lot of traditional businesses are not going to look the same. And they're just not. So either, you know, you have an opportunity to get out in front of that or, or right. be left behind. You're an expert on disruption. I mean, this is, this is where your brain lives. Yeah. So if folks are interested in better understanding these concepts, they should just reach out to you. Yeah, I'd, I'd be glad to talk with them. I've, I've been looking at disruption for a long time. And uh, since I started doing this 15 years ago, I used to say the pace of change was fast then. It is off the charts now. 
Right. So you really can't afford not to be thinking about this. This article is a great place to start. If you just have a couple of minutes and want to kind of wrap your head into it, if you want to take a little bit more time and, and kind of dig into some of the frameworks and understand some of the potential implications for your business, we can typically do that in the half a day or a day session.